Hey everybody, Bill Ohm from mmpctech.com. How you doing? I hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather. Well, at least if you're from the Midwest, finally we got some decent weather here. Enough about the weather. What am I doing today? I'm gonna to show you how to paint your PC cooling fan a nice high gloss color finish like this Corsair SP120. Now, why did I choose the Corsair SP120? They also have a 140 version. These are great fans whether you're into liquid or air cooling your system. Great static pressure for radiators, lots of airflow, low decibel, just all around great fan. And another cool thing is that they come from the factory with colored trim rings, three of them, uh, white, blue, and red with the packaging. Um, but what about people that don't have a theme that coordinates with one of those colors? How about if they want to do something different, custom, and go as far as painting the fan blades and the frame itself. Well, that's the great thing about these SP fans is that you can easily remove the fan blade hub by pulling it off. And I'll show you how in this tutorial. But you can also use this guide on painting other things that are plastic or metal um, because the products that I'm gonna use that are actually from amazon.com, you can easily purchase and uh, use for painting your own PC case, keyboard, mouse, or whatever. The only thing is when you use this enamel paint that it has a much longer cure time than any lacquer paint out there. So you just gotta be patient. And um, well, anyways, I'll show you all the steps that I took in painting this fan, this real nice, vibrant, glossy color finish. Let's just take a closer look at the results that I got using these aerosol paints, which I'll go over shortly. Enamel is great for getting a high gloss finish, especially when you apply an enamel clear coat over the color finish. Now the Corsair SP120 fans look like this. They're all black and they come with three color trim rings that snap in and out, white, blue, and red. The aerosol paint that I'm using is used to paint engine blocks and it's by Plasticoat and there's other brands out there mentioned. The first thing you wanna do is remove the adhesive labels from the factory by Corsair. And I like to use a heat gun to do this so I don't have any adhesive glue left over. And you can also use a hair dryer instead of a heat gun. Uh, you can get heat guns for around 80 bucks on eBay. It's just a nice, easy way to remove adhesive labels. Otherwise, you can pick it off and use some soapy water to get the glue residue off. Just take care that you don't get anything inside wet. Now, on the back of the fan hub, it's sealed from the Corsair factory. In order to remove the axle and fan blade hub, just take your two thumbs and gently push towards the center of the hub to remove the blades, and it pops off just like that. There is a white nylon washer on the axle when you pop the hub off, so make sure you keep that with it and don't lose it. In the corner of the fan frame are rubber noise dampening isolation grommets, I guess you could describe them as. And to remove these, use a flathead screwdriver and gently pry the raised portion that goes through the mounting hole out. And just keep gently prying it out until you can remove it with your fingers. The SP's corner mounts are made from a soft gray rubber. I'm gonna leave them as is because they work for my color theme. Look at what Plasti Dip offers for coating rubber or there's other specialty coatings out there for either dyeing or painting rubber products. Now that the SP cooling fan is completely dismantled, let's mask off everything so the components are protected from paint. I prefer to use 3M Scotch 233 Plus green masking tape on all of my projects. It's got really good adhesion. It won't just peel off on its own and it doesn't leave a sticky glue residue like some of the cheaper masking tapes out there. I've cut a five inch long piece from the green masking tape and there is a small channel that goes around the magnets on the fan frame that you can insert the tape into. And then what I'll use is a micro flathead screwdriver to go along the side of it to make sure it's firmly attached inside the channel. Next step is taking the three pin fan power connection, detaching it from the back side of the frame and then wrapping it around the taped hub. Hold that firmly in place and then take and then take another piece of masking tape and wrap that around the three pin fan connection. 
so it's taped to the inside hub and it won't be in your way later while you're painting. Just a warning, if you try using the blue painter's tape that you get at hardware store or home improvement stores, that tape has a very low adhesion level, so it's probably going to peel off at some point and just cause frustration. So if you can find this 233 plus tape somewhere, probably an auto body specialty store, it's much better because it has stronger adhesion. Next, I'm using scotch bright pads to scuff the surface. This is to give adhesion to the first coat of primer to all the plastic parts. I'm also scuffing the surface of one of the trim rings that I'm going to paint as well. So now everything is prepped and ready for paint. Here's the lineup of our paints. For my primer base coat on all of my plastic parts, I'm using Duplicolor Self-Etching Primer. You can use this on both metal and plastic surfaces. Self-Etching Primer is the best for promoting adhesion for paints. You do not have to use the Duplicolor brand if you can't find it. For my color coat on the fan blades and the fan trim ring, I'm using Plastic Coat's Engine Enamel Chevrolet Engine Orange number 200. This is a ceramic resin based paint. It's very durable once it cures, but it does have a long cure time of at least 24 hours before you handle it. And the same goes for the aluminum color version as well from Plastic Coat, which I'll be using to paint the fan frame. I'll be top coating the Plastic Coat Orange and Plastic Coat Aluminum color with Rust Oleum's Engine Enamel Clear. If you prefer, you can use Duplicolor or Plastic Coat's own Engine Enamel Clear instead of the Rust-Oleum. I just happened to use the Rust-Oleum because I had it available. So now we're finally ready to paint our parts. I'll be starting off with the fan frame and I've made a hook from a clothes hanger and I'll be hanging that on a pipe. Don't forget to work in a well ventilated area and wear a filtered respirator mask. The room temperature while painting these parts was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Regardless of what paint brand you buy, make sure you read the manufacturer's label for the recommended environment and temperatures to use their product. Our first step in painting is applying the Duplicolor self-etching primer to the fan frame. I'm going to apply two coats in five minute intervals. That means apply one coat, wait five minutes, and apply the second coat. After applying the second coat of self-etching primer, allow the pieces to dry for at least 30 minutes before applying the first color coat. After 30 minutes of cure time, I can now apply our Plastic Coat Engine Enamel Aluminum Color number 207. I'll be applying four coats in five minute intervals. Each application should be a light coat holding the can at least eight to 10 inches away from the object. Once you've applied four coats, to the fan frame and you've allowed five minute intervals between each coat, allow the piece to dry for 30 minutes before you apply the Rust-Oleum Engine Enamel Clear Coat. Repeating the same procedure that you did with the color coats, applying four coats between five minute intervals. After applying the fourth coat of clear, you need to wait 24 hours before you handle or touch the piece. The ceramic resin has a long cure time. In fact, it's not fully cured until 30 days, but you can handle it after 24 hours of dry time. Now that our fan frame is drying over the next 24 hours, we can go ahead and paint our fan blade hub. And what I'm doing is using a aerosol can cap to place the fan hub on top of as we paint it. So we're going to repeat the same process that we use on the fan frame, starting with the Duplicolor self-etching primer, applying two coats between five minute intervals. Five minutes after applying your second coat of the Duplicolor self-etching primer, let the fan blade hub dry for 30 minutes and then flip it over to paint the other side. After flipping the fan blades to the other side, repeat the same process again of two coats with a five minute wait between coats. After applying the second coat, wait 30 minutes before applying the color coat. And the color coat is the Plastic Coat Engine Enamel Chevrolet Engine Orange number 200, which was seen on muscle cars in the late 60s and 70s. And still today, I love this color. And by this point, you should know the drill. All together now, four coats with five minute intervals. I'm sorry to bore you, but this is a tutorial. And hey, I actually had to live this and narrate it. So you can do it. It's worth the results. Now pay attention here. The ring only requires two coats of paint and clear. You don't want to put on too many coats because you'll change 
the fit tolerance of the ring when you go to reinstall it into the fan frame. It won't want to fit. So if you run into that situation, you can use sandpaper to go around the outside edge or use an X-Acto knife to take excess paint off around the four mounting tabs around the outside of the trim ring so it will fit snugly back into place inside the fan frame and won't block the fan blades from turning. So what we're doing at this stage right now is applying the four coats of Rust-Oleum Engine Enamel Clear in five minute intervals to the front side of the fan blades. Now here's a key point to remember. Once you've done this to the one side, let the fan blades cure for 24 hours before you flip them upside down to paint the back side. The reason being is that the ceramic resin needs a long time to cure and if you do it before then you're probably going to get marks on the front side of the fan blade from it resting even just for a few minutes. So I'm going to repeat that just so it's clear to everyone watching. After painting the front side of the fan blades and clearing them wait 24 hours before you handle it you touch it or you move it just let it sit there then the next day flip it over onto its face paint and clear the back side then you have to wait another 24 hours before you handle or touch it the reason being is that this resin just plan out and prepare your time so you can work on something else while your parts dry they require a longer curing time but Automotive enamel paints will yield a much more protective surface coat and higher gloss color finish. So it's worth the wait. So I've let my parts cure for a total of two days and I'm just removing all the tape and assembling everything, reinserting the three pin connector wire in the back of the fan frame. If you plan to custom sleeve your three pin fan connection in your build, right now would be a good time to do that before reinstalling it into the fan frame. I'm also reinstalling the four corner mount grommets and these are turn out to be a good color accent to the silver aluminum frame. Next step is reinstalling the fan blades into the fan frame. Again don't lose that white nylon washer. I've had people squawk at me over the last decade when I've painted fans and shown them online. You can't do that! The extra weight of the paint will lessen the lifespan of the fan. Obviously doing this voids your warranty, duh. Uh, and those of you who've watched my videos over the years know that's what I do, I void warranties. Now I haven't personally witnessed the weight of paint being applied to a fan blade hub causing the motor to prematurely wear out. Not to say that it isn't feasible, maybe after six plus years, uh, could it affect the CFM rate? Yes, slightly it could. Um, that's kind of the compromise you make when you want something truly custom and unique is there's always some type of compromise. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this little do-it-yourself guide that you can use on your own projects. Please like and share it. And I thank you for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, hello and welcome. We'll have more videos soon. Take care, everybody, and have fun voiding your warranties.